Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather. Mark Shera. With guest stars David Huddleston, Wayne Maunder, special guest star Trish Stewart. Tonight's episode, Copycat Killing. in trouble, you know that? What'd you say? Come out here a minute, will ya? Oh. Look what you're doing to me with your good cooking. <laughs> Don't you find it, Big Bear. It <laughs> looks good on you. You're so sweet. You're so soft and you're so beautiful. <laughs> Come on, Coach. You've got a game and I've got shopping to do. <laughs> All right, buy yourself some pretty things. Have a good time. I love you. Rolly, listen, you know what the traffic's like down in L.A., so if I'm late, there are a lot of cold cuts in the fridge, okay? Ah, uh, don't worry. You know me, I'll be filled up with hot dogs and soda pop by the time the game's over anyway. Listen, you crazy Indian, you. You shouldn't be calling me here at all. You could have gotten me into a lot of trouble, you know. Today. Now? Oh, Vance, I can't. I have plans. You really know how to get to the lady, don't you? <laughs> Ooh, you stinker, you. Sure, it's a lot better than a motel room. Where do you have it parked? Yeah, I know the spot. Uh, near where the old Woodstock Road ends. Ciao. Nice spot, isn't it? Probably good for trout. Might be good for bluegill, too. Maybe big mouth bass. Hey, look, man. I'm staking this spot out for a girl that'll be here in about a couple of minutes. So if you're gonna do any fishing, how about trying someplace else, okay? Fishing? No, no, no. No, no fishing. I, uh... I coach a little kid's baseball team on Saturday morning. So aren't you going to be late for the game? Are you in love with her? Who? Oh, this, uh, this girl you're meeting. Love? <laughs> That's one four-letter word, man, I never use. What's it to you, anyway? Is she in love with you? Take off, man. Go mind your own business. This is my business. She's my wife. What are you trying to pull? I have to know. Stay back, man. Is Kitty in love with you? Kitty? 
Her name's Alita. Yeah, man, we're talking about two different gals. No, we're not. I'm telling you, her name isn't Kitty, it's Alita. She wouldn't be married to a nice guy like you. She's a real swinger, you know what I mean? Her and her trap. Hey, wait a minute, man, I didn't say that. Hey, wait, though, man. Take a beautiful thing like her. You take advantage of her. And you use her. Kitty's not a trap. Brother Vince and I, we were, we were always outsiders. Because our mother was Cheyenne, a full-blooded Cheyenne. And I'm proud of it. Well, that's something to be proud of, one of the first families of America. But whoever murdered Vince didn't think so. That's one of the things that puzzled me. The things that you told me on the phone didn't seem to reconcile with what they printed in the local paper. Got it all wrapped up very neatly, haven't they? Allege, psychopathic killer, Arnold Nesson, accused of five ritual murders. His last victim, Vince Stahl. I guess he killed those other people, but he didn't kill Vince. Why are you so positive? Because Arnold Nesson and my brother were kids in school together. They were best friends. And until I moved to Los Angeles a few years ago, he was, he was like a second brother to me. A few years, things happen, people change. Mr. Jones, I loved my brother very much. He did have his faults. But he was proud, arrogant. I thought he was God's gift to women. He made a lot of enemies that way. Anyone in particular? I don't know. Vince seemed to have a knack of getting people down on him. Even the fellows out at the construction site. Where is that? Over in San Leon. They're, they're building a new shopping center. Please, Mr. Jones. Somebody killed my brother and made it look like another hangman murder. I know I'm not just imagining it. Well, Lucy, I told you on the phone I would try to help you, and I will. Sheriff, I've got a visitor. Barnaby, you old son of a gun. How you been, Rolly? Fine, just fine. <laughs> don't tell me, don't tell me. The fish are biting up in the High Sierras, right? Well, it's uh, not the High Sierras. It's right here in Coverton, Rolly, uh, that uh, hangman business. Oh. Well, that's, that's murky waters, Barnaby. I don't think the boy will ever be brought to trial. He's a Bible student. Mild as a mouse when you meet him, but uh, then he decides he's God's Avenger and kills five people. You sure, Roly? Five, not four? 
Now I see what got you into this. Lucy Stahl, right? She's been on my back ever since the arrest. She has this idea she's not getting a fair shake. Just another dead engine, right? Lumps her brother in with all the rest. Sure she'd feel that way. Mr. Jones, the only reason the sheriff didn't tell Lucy everything... Campbell, I'll take care of this, all right? Barnaby, do you, uh... Do you know what this maniac does to his victims? Yes, he, uh, arranges the bodies in a kneeling position with the hands clasped as though in prayer. Then he puts a hangman's noose around their necks. He became the Almighty's appointed executioner. There are certain details that haven't been reported because I haven't released them. Like, for instance, how he cut a cross on their foreheads. Do you think I should have told the girl that? You think I should let her see the medical examiner's report, let her see the photographs? This is how your brother looked, honey, right after the hangman got through with him. I understand, but um, you don't mind if I take a look at the records of all five cases? Of course not. Campbell, give Mr. Jones a copy of anything he wants on the Nesson case. Yes, sir. Where are you keeping the suspect? He's, uh, he's in the hospital now. He was uh, wounded, resisting arrest. Barnaby, there's somebody I want you to meet. Sure. Copies. Hi, Big Bear. <laughs> Barnaby, got a surprise for you. This is Mrs. Roland G. Braddon. Well, uh, when did this happen? About 18 months ago. Kitty came through with one of those traveling musical shows. I made sure she never left. This is one of my dear friends from L.A., Barnaby Jones, my wife, Catherine. Well, it's a pleasure, Mr. Jones. Mrs. Braddon, pleasure is all mine. Honey, I have to go to the bank. You need any cash? I don't know. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. It was nice meeting you, Mr. Jones. I'll see you later. Mm. Now, there is a lovely lady. Best thing that ever happened to me. May I speak to you? I'm uh, not a policeman or a doctor. I'm trying to help someone that I think you know. Lucy Stahl. Her brother went to school with you. Vince Stahl. Vince? We were friends. I remember. That's right, you were friends. Let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Is that why you killed Vince, because he was wicked? I, uh... I don't know why. But they... They say I killed him. They say? Don't you remember? Yes! Yes! I killed him! I remember I killed him! I killed them all! Five Nesson, or just four? I am the instrument of the Lord. Chosen one shall destroy those men, which have not the mark of God in their forehead. Alita? You sure look different with your hair changed around like that. Billy, I can't talk to you here. Would you just please go away? Hey, come on. What is this? I've been looking out every night for you at the roadhouse, hoping that we could... Billy, please. Just leave me alone now, and I'll explain to you later, okay? Is it because of what happened to Vince? Huh? 
Look, we were pals, you know that. But he's gone. We're still here. You always turn me on, Alita. You know that. How about it? Let's get together, huh? Okay. Uh, I'll come over to the roadhouse, I promise. How about tomorrow? I get off around noon. Tomorrow. Now will you go, please? Yeah, ma'am. According to the psychiatrist's report, at the moment of each attack, Nesson imagined he was executing his own father. Seems he held his old man responsible for his mother's early death. I told you it'd be a waste of time. No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I was surprised to see that he was so small. I bet he doesn't weigh over 130 pounds. He's been stalled six feet, weighs 170. I wondered about that, too. I figured that Nesson probably took stall by surprise, maybe from behind. Well, they do say madness gives a man superhuman strength. Yeah. Well, here are these copies for your files. Gamble. Yes, sir. The Nesson file. Roy, are you absolutely certain in your mind that somebody else didn't kill Stahl using the hangman's ammo? Barnaby, you've seen the files. You know there are certain details that I didn't release. And there's no one that could know those details except the real hangman or us. But there are certain inconsistencies in the files. For instance, the rope. Now, in the first four murders, the rope used was a fine white nylon. In Vince Stahl's case, it was hemp, old and worn. Maybe he just ran out of the nylon. Campbell, ain't you supposed to be relieving Gorman on that Macaulay Ranch stakeout? Yes, sir, but not for a half an hour yet. Well, since you're so all fired anxious to help, why don't you go now? Yeah, yes, sir. On my way. Then there was uh, the murder weapon. In all four of the murders, the weapon was either a blunt instrument or a knife. And Vince Stahl was the only one that was manually strangled. He was the youngest and the strongest. All the rest were uh, in their 50s, about the same age as Nesson's father. Don't you think I've looked into all these points? Don't you think I've checked them out? I know you have. I, I'm just airing out my mind, Rowling. And the more I do, or it seems like a copycat killing. Yeah, listen, I got work to do. <clears throat> listen, we can talk about it more later at my house, maybe at supper, both of you. Kitty's a great cook. Sure, that sounds like a fine idea. We'll uh, call you when we get back from San Leon. San Leon? What are you going way out there for? For Vince work. I promised his sister I'd check this out all the way. Cranston? Yeah. What are you selling? Your foreman says that you knew Vince Stahl about as well as anybody on the job. We kicked around some. You cops or some? Private, we're just looking into his death. What's the look? They got the guy right? The hangman? Yeah, well, we're looking into other possibilities. I understand that Vince was hard to get along with, had a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. Don't know why. With his looks, he had it made. Oh, a lady's made, huh? Yeah. Anybody's lady. Your lady, maybe? Is that why you and Vince had a fight at that roadhouse near here the night before he died? Who told you? Oh, the foreman, right? Mr. Big Mouth. Are you the coroner? Vince died about 10 o'clock the next morning. Yeah? So what? Well, we were just wondering how long your little go-round with uh, Stahl lasted. Not until 10 o'clock the next morning. That's what you're aiming at. OK? Oh, here he is now, ma'am. Are you sheriff the missus? Oh, good. Thanks for visit. Hi, hon. Roly, 
Listen, there's a sale at Trent's. You know that new store over in Patterson Springs? Going shopping again? Again? Well, my tire was flat the last time, and so I couldn't go. I told you about it, remember? Yeah. Well, I didn't mean for you not to go. Uh, and listen, if you're going to be late, uh, there's some cold cuts left from the other night. Well, I didn't say I was going to be late. But in case I am, I'll give you a call. Drive careful, all right? Okay. I'll see you later. Did you call the police? But I can't, amigo. I do that every time there is a little fist fight around here. I double my telephone bill. Well, we're told that uh, Vince and Billy Cranston did quite a bit of damage. Yeah, but they paid for that. Besides, I needed a few new chairs, and the mirror was cracked anyway. Do you know the lady they fought over? Lady? They don't come in this place, my friend. Mr. DeSantis, we are not the law. So anything you tell us, as far as it goes. But I would like a little cooperation. OK. This blonde chica that Vince was seeing, Billy got real mad, said he saw her first. So Vince worked him up a little bit. This blonde chica, do you know her name? Alida. Alida what? Hey, don't ask me any last names, man. OK, uh, this Alida, uh, what did she look like? Like a dream. A beautiful dream. Sheriff's not in. Something I can do for you? Well, as a matter of fact, maybe you can. Do you have any information on a young fellow named Cranston, Billy Cranston, working on some uh, shopping center project over at San Leon? San Leon. Mm, that's over 10 miles outside of our jurisdiction. Oh, this may be of interest to you. From the uh, L.A. coroner's office. When did it arrive? Yesterday. I guess the sheriff forgot to mention. Our medical examiner wanted another opinion on the wound found in Vince Stahl's forehead. What wound? I thought he was strangled. As part of the ritual, the hangman cut the figure of a cross in the foreheads of all his victims. Lacerations on Vince Stahl's forehead, much wider from those found on the previous four victims. What does that add up to? Well, it seems to indicate that the instrument used on Vince didn't have the clean cutting edge of a knife, same as that used on the other victims. It could have been etched with a hammer and chisel for all that matters. Nesson did it, you bet. I wish I were as sure as that. Yeah, but it's the hangman's M.O. It all adds up. I mean, the cross on the forehead and the noose around the neck, Vincent's body kneeling and the pile of stuff in front of him. What pile of stuff? Oh, you know, his wallet and keys and money and jewelry, all his personal effects. What do you mean, like an offering? Yeah, whatever. You read it all in the case files. The details being withheld from the public. I don't remember reading anything about personal effects. Well, I guess the sheriff's still sitting on that one. Nope. Nothing on any Billy Craston. Well, how about a call to the sheriff in San Leon? Maybe he's got something on Craston. Yeah, could be. But I'll need Sheriff Braddon's permission. Well, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't take the chance of us being seen together. Why? Who are you afraid of? It's none of your business. I just can't be seen with you, that's all. OK. So let's go someplace. Where? Cedarland Motel, over by Riverview. I already got us a room. OK. OK. I have a call to make first, though. You go ahead, and I'll meet you. Yeah.
Hi, Gus. It's Mrs. Braddon. Is Roly there? Oh, well, would you tell him I called to say that I'd be late, please? Thank you. Cranston kid. Deputy called me on it. I told him to go ahead and call San Leone and see if they had anything on him. You're still looking for a candidate for that copycat killing theory of yours, aren't you? Have a seat. How about a drink? Oh, uh, no, thank you. You know, the thought keeps reoccurring to me that there is a possibility that somebody tried to match up the stall killing with the hangman's M.O. Oh, Billy Cranston? He uh, knew stalled habits and movements. He was strong enough. Might have even had a motive. I understand they had a fight over some girl, a girl named uh, Alita. Does that name mean anything to you? Nope. It's Kitty. That uh, scene of the crime evidence that's being withheld, how many people in your department uh, know all the details? Well, besides myself, there's uh, the medical examiner, two deputies, Bert Campbell and Gus. Why? Well, if a case were made against Cranston, I can't figure out how he would have gotten all this information which uh, you withheld, uh, some of it from me. Now, you know how it is, Barbie. You gotta hold something back. Else, the defense might claim that the evidence has been tainted by showing it to too many outsiders. Rolly! Oh, hi, hon. Oh. I got it, I got it. What a tail I found. What? Mr. Braddon, may I help you? Mr. Jones, uh, no, I'm going to take these upstairs. Would you excuse me, please? Well, here's more bargains I can't afford. <laughs> I bet husbands have been using that land since uh, the ancient Greeks. <laughs> Excuse me. Braddon. How did it happen? About that Cranston kid. Yeah. Right, I'll tell him. Yeah, thanks, Gus. You ask us to check San Leone. Cranston kid had an accident. He's dead. What kind of an accident? Well, his motorcycle went off a cliff down by that construction site. It's a rugged area. Lab boys won't touch anything till daylight. Well, it kind of blows that Cranston angle, doesn't it? Sure looks that way. We could only find that girl that uh, they thought about, uh, Alita. Well, I mean, even if you did find her, what could she tell you? Well, I wouldn't know until I asked you a few questions. Well, thank you, Rolly. Good night. And good night. Say good night to your lovely wife.
Hi, Betty. Hi. Bye, Betty. Barnaby, you forgot to sign the IRS quarterly report. Did you come all the way down here to bring me this? Well, only because I know you'd grouch for a week if you have to pay the penalty on this, and you will have to if it's not postmarked by midnight tonight. Where's J.R. off to? Going to a honky-tonk roadhouse to find a girl. Oh, Alita, the girl you told me about on the phone. That's right. Since you're here, I might as well put you to work, too. Well, I haven't had breakfast yet. Well, you can have breakfast on me. As soon as I take you over to Stalls, you can go through Vince's camper. He's got it parked there. What am I looking for? Same thing J.R. is, a lead on a leader. Flakes. Off this fender, all right. Looks to me like that uh, bike may have contacted something up here on the road before it went over the side. Sure looks like it, doesn't it? Barnaby. Rolly. How you been, Clem? Oh, pretty good. Playing pretty far out of your territory, aren't you, Sheriff? Well, there's a chance that this Cranston kid could be connected with a case that my department's looking into. I thought I'd give it a look-see. All I can tell you right now is it appears he might have been forced off the road. Hey, Jerry, let's get a couple of pictures of where it went off over here. Excuse me. Surely. Barnaby. She was at the roadhouse yesterday. Just a few minutes, not long after we left. I tried to get oh, some information. Oh, 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 slow it down to a gallop. He's talking about Alita, that's our elusive blonde. Yeah, well, the owner of the roadhouse, Caesar, was really tight-lipped about it until he found out that Cranston was dead, and then uh, he was really shaken up, and he started to give me all What the... about Alita? Well, she came to the roadhouse to meet Cranston, and they had some words, and he took off on his bike. With the girl? No, no, she stayed by to make a phone call, but the capper is that when he took off, Caesar, who's the owner of the roadhouse, saw a Jeep go after him, a Colvert and Sheriff Department Jeep. Same color as Cranston's bike. Jake, who had this out yesterday afternoon? Uh, Bert Campbell, sir. Ask him to step out of here, will you? Where were you yesterday afternoon, Bert? You know where I was, where you sent me. I was on stakeout out at Macaulay's place. Anybody see you there? Talk to anyone? Of course not. I was on a stakeout. What's this all about? See if you can check that out, Jedediah. Ever hear of a gal named Alita Burke? Alita? She hangs out around Taylor's Roadhouse. You've been out there, haven't you, Burke? Sure, a few times. But I never heard of any Alita. You're a ladies' man, aren't you, Burke? That Alita must be something, huh? Well, Sheriff, I told you, I don't know her. Vince Stahl knew her. Billy Cranston knew her. They're both dead. So? So in light of certain information that Mr. Jones has brought me, plus the fact that we found red paint on your hubcap, it just might be the possibility that somebody wanted the both of them dead so that they could have the lady all to themselves. Are you accusing me? Right now, I'm just suspending you from duty until we sort things out. So you won't go too far. I'm holding you on suspicion of reckless driving. You can switch that to lunch. Vince Saul's sister gave me toast and coffee. What do you got? Well, I didn't find anything with Alita's name on it or anything like that, but I did find this in a hairbrush in Vince's camper. Blonde. As you can get. Platinum. Now I know why we've had so much trouble finding her. This is not real hair. Mm. Nylon from a wig. 
When J.R. calls, tell him to try me at the sheriff's office. I already told the sheriff I don't know how that paint got on the wheel of my Jeep. I told him. Yeah. I've been going over this motor pool log. Uh, according to this, you drove directly to the scene of the Macaulay stakeout and then drove right back to the station when you were relieved. That's right. It's all right there. The reading on the mileage speedometer shows that. Give or take a mile or two. Turns out to be the same distance to the place where uh, Billy Cranston's bike went over the side. So? It proves nothing. You're wrong, son. It proves you could be telling the truth. If somebody saw you at the Macaulay Stakeout. See, if you'd have gone to both places, you would have added uh, 30 or 40 miles to your speedometer reading. Thanks, Mr. Jones. Now, if we can only get the sheriff to give me the benefit of the doubt, I'd be okay. You know, that's something that puzzles me. He could have checked this maintenance record just as easily as I did. I guess it's just his way of reminding me that he can really lean on me if he has to. Why? What's he got against you? Maybe I'm imagining it, but I think he's leery of me because I know how he met his wife. Well, doesn't everybody? She came through town in a traveling musical show. And... Is that what he told you? OK, Mr. Jones, let it go. This is no time for gallantry, son. Come on, out with it. Last year, we raided a club over by the stockyards. Arrested about 16 people for pushing dope, prostitution. One of them was a go-go dancer named Kit Jennings. I see. I was the only one who saw Roly sneak her out of that time. Took her home, saw her and her name was taken off the arrest sheet. A few weeks later. Kit Jennings became Mrs. Catherine Braddon. Telephone, Mr. Jones. That's right, Barnaby. He was cutting brush on the slope. Oh, just a minute, Jedediah. Deputy Wilson is here. Uh, why don't you spell it out for him? OK. There was a field worker who saw Deputy Campbell in his Jeep in the trees behind the Macaulay Ranch House. Now, he had him in full view on and off for over three hours, from noon to close to 3.30. And uh, Billy Cranston died uh, around 12.31 o'clock. Oh, looks like you have grabbed the brass ring, Jedediah. Get the name of that field worker and then get back here. Right. Yeah, that's her. That's Alida. But then, you came in here knowing that already. So why ask me? Knowing something and making yourself believe it not easy sometimes. How long have you known? A long time. Did you just let me go on? Well, I was afraid I might lose out in a face-off. I look in the mirror, you know, I see what I am. Oh, Roly, don't. Please don't put yourself there. Roly, I love you. In spite of this craziness in me, I do love you. Just as you are a, a good and a kind man. But I'm not exciting enough for you, is that it? Like that half-breed young bucks down at the construction site. You know about Vince? I wasn't spying or anything like that. It's just that I overheard you making that date with him to meet him at the lake. And then you went to the, to the lake? It was just eating me up. I, I had to talk to him. I had to... 
He's much as called you a tramp. Oh, my God. You killed him. I didn't mean to. I should have heard him. You should have seen that smirk on his face. And Billy Cranston, too. Yeah, well, I couldn't stop you, so I figured the next best thing was to stop him. Oh, my God, what have I done? No, no. Not your fault. You can't help me in what you are. Any more than I can help loving you in spite of it. Oh, my God. I'll never hurt you again, I promise. Barnaby. Rolly, what are we going to do? He's not going to stop until he finds out everything. Uh, listen, if need to be, I'll take care of Barnaby. It's, uh, it's just uh, tell him, uh, tell him I'm on my rounds or anything. I just am too tired to Mickey Mouse with him now, all right? Please. This is Brad. If you're looking for Rolly, he's not here right now. The funniest car's outside. Is there anything I can help you with? Yes, there is. Uh, as a leader. A leader? Actually, you can help Rolly a great deal more than me. Sorry, I don't understand. Can't you come back when my husband's here, please? Why don't you uh, tell him to come out? He could do himself a lot more good by giving a statement for the district attorney now about uh, Billy and Vince on his own. You don't leave me much choice, old friend. Too late for that. No, it's not too late. Now, if we get a little head start, then we can go someplace where they'd never find us. A couple hours, OK? And if I don't, then what? You shoot me? I don't think you can. I'm between a rock and a hard place, Barnaby. Please don't try me. I don't think it's in you, Rolly. The kill in the heat of passion or jealousy, yes, but uh, in cold blood, I don't think so. You stay right where you are, Mr. Jones. Now, Bear and I are going to get out of here. And you're going to come with us. Tell her there's no place to go. He's right, huh? No! I guess it's going to take some getting used to now that Roly's not around here to bark at me anymore. Yeah, must be kind of a cold feeling to be giving orders instead of taking them. Well, whatever else Sheriff Braddon was, he was a good teacher. Good luck, Sheriff. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, I want to thank you for finding out what really happened to my brother. Must have been difficult for you. In a way, we're all prisoners of fate. Roly did what he thought he had to do. So did I. I also want to apologize for what I said about the people in town. Being prejudiced. Lucy's received several job offers from people in town who want her to come back and live here. Good. Oh, what's it going to be, Big City Lights or Sleepy Hollow? <laughs> I'll have to think about that one for a while. Well, when you decide, uh, let us know so we can stay in touch with you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good luck.